So no, Ollie, this is your recording studio. Yeah, this is a, this is where I do the record. This uh, record the vocals actually. And do you do much of it? Hey, do you do much of it? What oh, doing a good bit? Eh? And then how long have you got this set up? Oh, I have a good while. Mm. And Frank and Aaron, mm. of course, is here as well. And do you use it for yourself, like for? Oh yeah, too, yeah. Playing around with hobby. Well, my mate, my uh, we do the songwriting from uh, Ross Common, so he comes down if he's got a song to do, and we put it together down here. Okay. So this is the control room. Yeah, that, that's the way to look at it, yeah. And out next door, up there in the middle, we have the uh, sound room, is it? Yeah, that's the, that's that's the vocal booth. You can say the vocals for recording vocals or anyone else. It depends on how you set it up. But it's usually just vocals in there. And is that sound proofed? Well, it, it is. I mean, yeah. it, it, nothing comes into on on the, listening to any of the records or anything. This seemed okay actually. Okay. And you have this kind of stuff all your life, yeah, yeah? Oh, yeah, I am, yeah. Um, well, you're a musician, really, aren't you? That's right, yeah. all my life, yeah. And how did you start out? Uh, how did I start out? Well, the father used to play the accordion, mm -hmm. and the mother used to have me on her knee singing songs. Mm -hmm. So was, that started me off. And then uh, back in the 60s, then, you know, you get the guitar and learn how to, to play it, and off you go. And were you self-taught? Oh, yeah, yeah. You got no lessons of anybody. Oh no, no lessons. I wish I had though. And what age did you start it about? Oh, what it roughly? Be, it'd be sixty-four anyway. Sixty-four, sixty-three, sixty. That's yeah, when you started, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah about that. And would you be a teenager then, like you were? Oh yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And who did you? Was there anybody around that you were playing with? Uh, well, no. Well, actually, Teddy Morden had a group at the time. We we got together myself and Frank and Teddy. Frank. And it was called the Teddy Morden Group, and we'd done the pioneer dances down in Westport. And who was Frank? Frank Hastings. Frank Hastings. Yeah, yeah. And were they all beginning the same as you were? They were. They were the same thing, yeah. None of them were in bands before you started that well, time? Well, no. We all more or less started at the same time, to be honest. Around right. 64, yeah? Yeah. And you were doing pioneer dances and... Yeah, we were doing pioneer dances. Yeah, mm. it's, that's, that's fine. Yeah. And what were you playing that time? Uh, guitars. And, guitars. Uh, you mean the music-wise? The music, yeah. It'd be 60s music. And who were your favourites of the time? Well, the Stones, the Beatles, you know, the Shadows, all that kind of stuff. Mm. And could you take them off? You could? Oh, yeah, yeah. And what did you do? Well, I used to do shadow stuff. Shadow them? Yeah, and uh, the boys would sing, well, the boys would sing the popular songs of the, uh, the, the charts at the time, you know, that kind of thing. And were you working at the time yourself? I was in Morden's Bakery, Bridge Street. <laughs> there was a break in Morden's Bakery in Bridge Street, there that's was right, at the time. Two sisters. Nana, oh, that's uh, Johnny Morden Pub now, is it? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Nana. Oh, okay. There was a bakery up the yard, actually. At the back? Yeah, at the back. And had they a grocery shop in the front? They had a, gro a bar and grocery. Of course, they still have that, haven't they? Yeah. They still have a little bit of grocery there, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. it would be, yeah. The fair days was busy, actually. Mm. And did you stay there for long? Oh, a couple of years, actually. But I was m more inclined to go mad with, to go out on the bands, like, you know? Mm. And what's your, what was your next band then after that? Uh, the, well, the first band, the first band we were, we were called, well, we had Teddy Morton Group was the first thing we had. And then uh, we had a, a band called the Pacific Blues. And uh, we used to do the concerts. And who was in that band? Well, we had, funny enough, we had um, Frank Hastings, Teddy Morton, myself, and Noel Hingerton. And um, what was it? we had Frank Morton. He was an accordion player from out the Castlebar Road somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, But uh, we went back again to the guitars. And, we, we... and then after that, then myself and Frank joined the leaders in Castlebar. And who were the leaders? The leaders were myself and Frank. And uh, we had... Uh, so, so we had Jimmy Deasy who passed away too a couple of years ago yeah. on drums. He was he was with. Um, and you have a picture of them here, you do? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's you, ourselves there. Can you find them out there now? Who's yes, there? That, that's Frank Hastings. Yeah. Jerry Duffy. Yeah. Noel Hingerton, Larry Hingerton's brother. Yeah. Noel Feeney. Yeah. Myself. Yeah. And Teddy Moran. And unfortunately, poor Teddy and died. Teddy today. just died on Wednesday. Uh, uh, Passed away, actually, yeah. That must have been a sad moment for you, wasn't it? It was. To yeah, hear him, yeah. It was, yeah. So yeah. the two of that band are gone now? That's right, there's two of the band gone. Yeah, two mm. of the band gone. And where would you go with that band? Though? Well, we were all over Ireland with the leaders. You were well known. Our manager back. here, I don't know if you, you can, probably can see him, PJ Henley, he used to work for the Connick Telegraph. Okay, yeah. And uh, PJ took us on all the all the halls in Ireland. He took the bookings, yeah? <laughs> he took the bookings, yeah. And how long did you last for that time? I think it was about three or four years, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. And we also used to back Maisie McDonald's sister, Deirdre McDonald. 
Oh, was she a country and western singer as well? country and western singer. And uh, we kind of, she was our lead singer at the time. And then that's that's another addition of the band. like, And we that opened up another lot of halls in Ireland for us mm. as well. And did you all have day jobs that time? Or? Uh, well, I, I don't know what Frank Hastings was working at. I forget now. He was he was down at the factory in, in the domain one time, as far as I remember. The textiles, eh? Yeah. And Teddy used to work in Tyler's shoe shop on Shop Street. Mm-hmm. Which is... Um, it's another business now, isn't it? And Jerry Duffy was a mechanic, was it? Jerry Duffy was a mechanic down in Newport, in Kelly's Garage, yeah. I think. Yeah. And Noel Hingerton was doing hairdressing in, in Ballinrobe. He was the only hairdresser at the time yeah. in Ballinrobe. He was Larry's brother, wasn't he? He was Larry's brother, yeah. What did he play? He played the... He, he played the trumpet. Trumpet, And yeah. he, sang, he sang lead singers, lead so songs with us, actually. Lead singer. Hmm. And, and um, Noel Feeney was the drummer. And what was the biggest gig he ever had, do you think? Well, the Royal Ballroom was the big one. We played with all the top bands. We had two band sessions, like, you know, we'd be on with the Royal, we'd be on with the Capital, we'd be, be on with the Dixies. You'd be the warm-up band, would you, or would you? We, yeah, we were on first, but you we had to be in the Irish Federation, or they wouldn't allow you to play with the top bands. You had to join the Federation. So there was a kind of union around that time, there Yeah, was. IFM, yeah. The, 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 it was in Dublin somewhere. But it was kind of a, you had to have, you had to be in it to actually play in the halls with the big bands. It used to be huge crowds that time, used oh, to? Oh, was, yeah. Was big, oh, huge crowds, isn't it? Yeah, that's for sure. What kind of numbers would you think there were? Oh, I'm not really sure, yeah. but it was a packed, if you can imagine, the Royal Ballroom packed, uh, packed it's solid. Two, you know? two or three thousand there, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, easy, probably. Easy. Mm. I used to do Barry's Hotel in Dublin nearly once every two months, which was, we enjoyed that gig. And would you stay overnight or would you go up and down the road? No, we'd go up and down the same night. <laughs> bad roads and all. And there were bad roads then, yeah. weren't there, yeah? And the black cattle. That's right. Do you ever have an accident? Tip. Yes, we had a bad accident. Well, a bad accident one time. That was before um, Frank came in to join the leaders. Myself and PJ Henley and Jimmy DC were coming back on a really stormy night. They were dropping me off back to Westport. And uh, we'd done a skid outside Westport somewhere. And I remember the two boys leaving the front seat and me holding the wheel. And then <laughs> the back, the van crashed into a wall and all the equipment fell out. And then I remember then we were going into hospital visiting people, you know, we were visiting the two guys in hospital. They were admitted, were they? Yeah, they weren't really seriously injured, but, uh, you know, it was more shock than anything else, but it was a real bad night, a real bad night. Yeah. That was the only one? That was the only one. It yeah, wasn't too bad. One. Yeah. Did you put up a lot of mileage in your time? You did? Well, PJ did. Yeah, well, he used to drive us all the way up to Kerry and down again and places Cork, you name it. And so the bad so, roads. So you done huge mileage, you did? Oh, we did. We mm. did. The money wasn't great, though. Did you ever, how much used to get for I a night that time? Five or something, if we're lucky, I think. But it was getting away, like, you know, it was getting away. It was great getting away from the town and you enjoyed it. visiting people, you know, and all that kind of stuff, yeah. Did you ever go abroad? Did you ever get a gig abroad? No, no we didn't, no. No. no the, the boys didn't really want to leave the town. We were getting a, a chance to go to England, but the boys chickened out. So you met all the big stars of the show band here, oh, you did? Them all, yeah, Joe Dole and Johnny McAvoy, the whole lot of them. We played with them all, actually. Played up front, uh, up front with them, yeah. yeah. We also backed Joe Lynch down in Newport too at a couple of concerts. Joe. Joe Lynch, uh, the actor, you know, uh, the Irish. Joe Lynch. Joe Lynch. Yeah, oh, Joe okay, Lynch right. Himself, yeah. yeah. He used to do tours, used to. Yeah, and that's right, yeah. And there was a sports guy too, Brendan. Was it Brendan's? I can't think of his Brendan O'Reilly, was it? Brendan O'Reilly. We backed him a couple of times as well. And what he do? Uh, what would he do? He was doing the singing, actually. Was well, he a good yeah, singer? Yeah, uh, it must have been Kerry or someplace. We don't know. We packed him as well. Mm -hmm. And did you do much in Westport? Well, we did. We or done, the bulk of your we, stuff? We've done the pavilion a lot. The pavilion, yeah? Yeah, we've done the pavilion. We've done the parochial hall Newport and we've done the halfway house a lot too. And who owned the pavilion at that time? Uh, I think it was t Tony, wasn't it? Well, the Tony. Yeah. The Tony, yeah. yeah. And uh, who owned the halfway? I'm not really sure. Who well, the books, the halfway. Well, the books. Well, the we, we used to run our own dances out there sometimes. PJ, PJ used to run them. Oh, you'd rent the hall? PJ would be on the door. Hmm. And he'd be taking the he'd be taking the tickets. Yeah. And uh, you, and you you kept it up all your life with the music, you did. Oh yes, I did, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and when I'm back to London, then uh, I ended up I had um, I was on the stage in the Albert Hall for about three three quarters of an hour. With uh, with other bands like oh, yeah, you know, yeah. one band and then then back in a country singer. And who was with you? Um, a guy called Tex Withers was the name. He, he won an award in Nashville. I remember. And him, we yeah. were we were um, backing him all the time. We were backing him all the time. I was his guitar player, really. Hmm. And then we were backing a country comedian singer guy too, as well. Yeah. But it was a great experience that night. You were born in Westport, were you? Born in Westport, yeah, down the Church Road. Church Road. Yeah, Church Lane. Yeah. And was your mother from? 
Mother was from uh, Dundalk. Dundalk. Yeah, the father was from Westport. And have you have your relations around here still there? No, uh, funny enough, my first cousin died in Warren Point there a couple of a uh, couple of well a couple of months ago. A couple of months ago, yeah. Yeah. And then you went to England, did it? I went to England in '68. And what back you... in 1999. Oh, you had a long time there. Didn't yeah, you? a long time there. Long time there. <laughs> and did you all go, or did you did you go yourself? Oh, the, the family went. My stuff and father and mother kept, we went together. And did you work? Did you get a job in England? Oh yes, I was working in an electrical factory. You know, soldering that kind of stuff. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I ended up in the laundry, automatic, yeah. driving one of the large machines. And did you play music over there? Oh, I did. Yeah, I was in various bands over there. Yeah. Hmm. And were you local bands or were you driving around the country? Well, no, we were. We had a band called the Rainbow Country Sounds and we were on BBC Radio twice, two country shows. No way. Two country shows, yeah, we were on two country and shows. And did you do a slot on it or were you doing the whole show? No, you get a, you get a slot, like you get a slot, yeah. three or four numbers mm. during the whole hour of the show. And that was in London, was it? That was in London, yeah. And did you live in London? I was living in London, yeah. I was living in Acton and I was living in, in um, Croydon. Hmm. Great city. Oh yeah, lovely city. Yeah, and uh, when did you come back then? Came back in ninety nine. I think it was ninety nine, because I remember we were coming down through Dublin and we seen uh, uh, Veronica Gearan's car. So that 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 pins, pins oh, it for me. You came along that. Yeah, we passed the incident, car yeah. and it was covered with tarpaulin in the middle of the road, and it just happened. I think the day before or the same day. I'm not sure. So did you take up with the lads again when you came back? Uh, no, not really. I started a one man band thing. Okay. And I started uh, playing for Vinnie Keogh at the Quay and on uh, Sunday nights and playing for Pat Dunning Saturday nights. Mm hmm. And you enjoy that? Oh, yeah, of yeah. course I did. And did you ever team up with anybody else? Uh, well, no. Well, you're one man show, yeah. I got a friend in Roscommon and we, and we kind of put the songwriting stuff together and he, he, we, he had a lot of success with it. Mm. Uh, Brendan Shine recorded four of the songs we'd done. Can you name any of them? And uh, Galway Queen was one. Yeah. And uh, I'd have to take out a list of them. Oh, yeah. but I, I had them. So uh, how did you pick up the, all this technology? How did you did you learn about it or just pick it up as you went along? Or? Well, I got a, I got a, an Atari c computer back in London, nineteen eighty, and then I didn't look back since. And you're self taught, yeah. It's self taught, yeah, and lots of mistakes. And what's all these bits do here now? What's that, that keyboard there? What do you do with that? Well, that, that keyboard drives this machine here, or it drives itself as well. And then you record a, a piano part in here, or yeah. a bass part, or an organ part, or a trumpet part. And then, you know, it just goes on forever. You can just add, keep adding forever, whatever you want. So it's all electronic music, yeah? All electronic, all electronic, yeah. Doesn't do a voice? No, it doesn't no. do a voice. But there is kind of vocals on it, but it's more or less choirs. More than anything else. For backup or for. And I played for you know if, I, if this thing was working. Oh, so. you got a, you got a glitch. <coughs> you got, got a bug. I got to get you. Got to reload my program again. Mm. And who were the local musicians around besides the your band at the time now? Oh, you were? the local musicians. Uh, well, Francie Cannon was with Pat Friel, mm -hmm. and but, Pat Friel, of course, himself, yeah. who was up here a couple of nights ago, actually. Yeah, and um, Perry Riley. Yeah. And. Um, that's all I can remember in Perry Rally. There's lads coming into the town playing with Pat Friel, but they were from places like Ballina and Clare Morris and places like that. Was Pat one of the first to start uh, music and bands around well, there? Basil kind of Moran was another one at the same time as right. Pat. He had a band at the same time. And Lenny, Tom Grant used to play with him. And Lenny Grimes? Lenny Grimes, of course, is the drummer, as mm. far as I remember. So there, there has been a lot of musicians oh, in there. Oh, there has, yeah. And over the years, yeah. That's a fact. And the first man as in Westport with a Stratocaster, the same as Hank Marvin on the Shadows, was Tom McGrann. Was he? Yeah. Yeah, and that was an eye opener for us all. And was it, it good? Was the same equipment as the Shadows. <laughs> was it good? Oh yeah, yeah. Would you notice it? You would. Oh yes, of course. It's not kind of marketing like this. Stratocaster yeah, yeah, is the yeah, best. But no? not many people could get one of them. But I think he had some relations in America who came over. Oh, okay. And said, took him up to Alton's and said, "Help yourself, Tom." Oh, that was and nice. He did. <laughs> Good guitarist, yeah? Oh, yeah, Tom's a good guitar player. Tom's a good guitar player. Who's the best musician around, I think? It's not a fair question, but no, anyway. No, it's not a fair question. No. Stick, stick your neck out there. No, I, 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 <laughs> that, Frank Hastings is a very good chord man. Is he, yeah? Very yeah. good chord man. Yeah. Best singer? Yeah, and Frank is a one man band as well and playing away all the time. Yeah, yeah. And the hell of match, really. Friday night, actually. Mm. 
Teddy used to play bass and sing. Mm, the poor old Teddy's gone, isn't he? Yeah, yeah? he is. He is yeah. Gentleman. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, there are many of them dead now, right? of the old singers. There is, actually. Well, Francis Cannon. Francis Cannon, yeah. Yeah, Francis Cannon, Jerry Duffy, Teddy. Was fancy jazz or easy or no fancy? I am mean, fancy. I think it was country music and country music. He liked he liked to eat Latin American stuff as well. He liked his Latin mm. American stuff. Did he play anything? He did. He played rhythm guitar. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, and he teached around Westport as well. He did he? A couple of people. Yeah. I think he taught Frank McCaffrey. That's another man we didn't mention. That's another man we didn't mention. <laughs> He's international, really, Sorry, isn't he? <laughs> That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. So you're going to keep it going as long as you can, anyway? Oh, yeah, well, that's true. It's down to age again, isn't it? Well, it's a great uh, hobby, isn't it? Of course it is. Yeah. Of course it is. You amazing. spend a lot of time in this nook here, you do, I suppose. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you're learning all the time. There's different things coming on the market, and you say it makes things easier. Is it getting easier? Sorry? Is it getting easier with the oh, yeah, electronics? Oh, yeah, things are the... easier. I mean, you just press a button on this thing, and you can have a rhythm guitar going. You know, it's crazy. And the great. And then... Um, Trumpets and saxophones and all that kind of stuff. It's unbelievable. Who was your favourite musician? Well, well, international, like, though, yeah. Well, Hank Marvin, uh, one of my favourites is Hank Marvin the Shadows. Mm. Always has been, you know. Does he still play, I think he does, isn't he? He does, he does but he's got a thing called, he's got a gypsy jazz thing going now. He lives over in Perth in Australia. Oh, okay. And he's got a kind of a trio or something, and they just mm. play jazz and Danger Reinhardt stuff. Mm hmm. Simon. So you like Paul Simon, yeah? Yeah, Paul Simon, yeah. And, uh, he has some great songs, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's very good stuff. Mm. And the usual rock and roll stars, you know. And the Beatles, of course. And all the 60s groups. Do you ever write a song yourself? Yeah, I've wrote about uh, about 25, a couple of instrumentals. Mm. Things like that, like, you know. Anybody ever take them up? Well, I got I put them on internet radio. They've been on Calc Radio, Tipperary Radio, all them kind of places. Okay. In fact, I was on radio a couple of weeks ago, and I don't know what song it was, up and played one of them. And mm. Did they ever ring you up to talk to you? <laughs> oh, yeah, I had a couple of interviews, yeah, which uh, I think it was Cork FM. And was that based on one of the songs you had composed? Or? Yeah, well, they played, a couple of, they played all the songs the night that they did the, uh, the interview with me, mm. which was kind of nice, really nice. And how do you think they picked up your name? Well, no, my friend is, um, in Roscommon, he, he's in contact with a lot of them. And we oh, have okay. a woman called Anne Hussey who lives in Tune. And she plugs us sometimes okay. with, with the radio stations. If, if we bring out a new song, she'll plug the song with the radio mm. stations. The radio is important for promoting songs. Oh, yeah, is. of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Get you across. You get an odd gig in Midwest, would you? Oh, you would. Oh, no, I, I, played, I was played in Midwest a couple of times, but that's gone back a while now. Okay, yeah. It's gone back a while. So you've been busy at music? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. enough, yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's great to have fellas like you in the, in the town that entertain us all. Well, it is, yeah. Sometimes we kind of don't listen to you, but when you start thinking <laughs> about it, uh, it's great to have it there, isn't it? It is great to have it's it. It's fantastic, yeah. yeah. There's a great way of life in the, in the 60s, anyway. Mm. Do you ever do concerts as such? No, we don't. No, as I said, we don't concerts in the 60s. Because, like, in the pubs, like, the fellas there be two concerts. Yeah, con yeah. Well, I suppose you go in early to listen to you, but you go late or... That's true. Well, you, you, I had a kind of a certain kind of a people following. You get a, sun, a regular Sunday night, like I did for a couple of years at, at the Helen. Certain people would come along and they'd be asking you for certain songs and you'd learn them for the next week. I suppose some of them joined when you. When they came back, you knew it was okay. Yeah. You know. would, you, would you come up singing with you sometimes? Would they? Oh, yeah. yeah. We backed a lot of people. Do you encourage that? You do? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a great thing. Yeah. Mm. Gets the whole crowd going. Really.